Well, hey guys, today's video, I'm gonna share with you my sunscreen empties. I have quite a few here from over the summer. You know, as a reminder, I recently did a whole skincare empties video where I did pretty much everything that I finished up except sunscreen. So if you missed that one, check it out. I like to do the sunscreen empties video separately. That way things just don't get too complicated. Before getting into it though, give this video a thumbs up if you like sunscreen videos uh, and make sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications on. That way YouTube lets you know as soon as my videos go live, that way you don't miss them. All right, first of all, this was my 2021, ugh, I'm flying, uh, sunscreen, one of my sunscreen favorites from 2021 and I finished another tube of it. It is the Aven Intense Protect um, sunscreen. Now this is not, this is only available in Europe. It's fragrance free, water resistant. I use it on my face as well as my body. I swam a lot in the pool this summer. I mean a lot, like a couple of times a week, which is quite a bit for me. Um, and I, so I ended up using this pretty much on my, both my face and my body for the purposes of the pool. Um, what I like most about this is not only do I like the way that it looks, uh, it kind of gives the skin a nice glow on the face. It doesn't burn around the eyes, which I also love. It doesn't run into my eyes, cause burning or stinging. And it has triazorb, which is an ingredient that is new, not approved for use here in the US because of the systems we have in place for approval of sunscreen ingredients, you know, it's just, it's just not, so here, as a, to take it a step back, the U.S. regulates sunscreens as medications, as drugs. Other countries don't. So the studies that the FDA requires for a medication are much more involved than a cosmetic. So for that reason, we don't get newer filters here because they want much more extensive long-term safety data. That being said, many of these ingredients, except for Trizorb, um, which are not approved for sunscreen use here in the States, they have been used safely in Europe and other countries throughout the world for a long time. Um, it's just a very uh, arduous process because it is considered a medication here and basically brands, you know, they're not gonna do that kind of work. And all that to say, Trizorb, what is it? It is a sunscreen ingredient that actually can help in protecting against visible light from the sun, which for people with deeper skin tones uh, really can be a sticking point for their hyperpigmentation, whether it be from healing acne, a bug bite, or if you have uh, melasma, visible light drives early onset and more stubborn hyperpigmentation in deeper skin tones. And sunscreen ingredients don't protect against that. The only other ingredients that protect against that are iron oxides, which you can find in tinted sunscreens. They're not the active sunscreen ingredient, but they, they can potentially improve that. So um, Aven, you know, they have developed Triazorb, which actually can block that. So really a great ingredient love this product and um yeah too bad you can't get it here it's good within six months of opening so that is that seems short for sunscreens so i'm glad i made my way through it because you want to make sure that you don't keep expired sunscreen uh you know you could possibly use it for a moisturizer although the preservatives may not be there uh, as far as efficacy but don't rely on expired sunscreen to protect you from the sun. So now that it's summer, it's winding down. If you had a particular body sunscreen or whatever that you used a lot, um, check the expiration date or you know check when you bought it. Um, because I find that some people, you know, when they start wearing uh, pants and things, they throw their body sunscreen, you know, in a bag somewhere, and then. <laughs> Next year they grab it and the year after that and before they know it they've been using the same body sunscreen for years Which actually should not happen because you should be using enough sunscreen that you make your way through it Anyways, pay attention to expiration dates is what I'm getting at um, Another European sunscreen that I finished up because of largely the time spent out in the pool um, Was the sunscreen mousse by Evie? This is really popular you take a golf ball size amount. It's a foam uh, you work it up in your hands and then you spread it on. I used it on my face a couple of times, didn't like the way that it looked, but I rather enjoyed using this on the body because I like the foam as opposed to a cream. Um, I, I did like that. 
Uh, I just found that it was nicer, more fast absorbing, not as heavy, greasy. I thought it was a great option too for the sweaty environment that we are in here all the time. Very breathable. Then a viewer sent me this. It's a kid's sunscreen from Europe. Rather enjoyed this. This was great in my bag. Uh, this one likewise, good within six months of opening. So I'm glad I finished that up. Uh, this is a good option for sensitive skin. It's, it doesn't burn or sting and it is water resistant, but it is very, it is a lot more shiny. Uh, it is not as aesthetic and a facial appearance as many other European sunscreens are. Uh, but it's a good option for the body. I ended up using it on my hands a lot, honestly, because it's this tiny little bottle. I kept it in my purse a lot and would just use it to as basically a hand moisturizer sunscreen. I also finished Hero Cosmetics, uh, the Force Shield. This is a zinc oxide sunscreen. It has a green tint to it, kind of camouflages redness. This is a good everyday moisturizer with sunscreen in it. Um, and uh, you can get it at Target. And I don't know if my code still works with Hero Cosmetics. I do work with them from time to time uh, as a disclosure, although this is not sponsored. Let me know in the comments. I, I've gotten comments uh, that you guys really like it. And I think it's a great option for a day, daily facial moisturizer. I also finished Aishin Mommy SPF 50. Love this. This sunscreen, um, the UV Aqua Milk, uh, PA SPF 50, water resistant. Uh, Japanese sunscreen, goes on like a dream, absorbs very quickly. There might be a little bit of a cast with this on certain skin types. I think it has titanium, I wanna say it has titanium dioxide or maybe it has zinc oxide, I can't remember. But it has chemical sunscreen ingredients that we don't have here. It's just very nice overall, the aesthetics of it. Works well around the eyes. I love it. I just wish that it came in a bigger bottle. I get it on Yes Style. You can also get it, sometimes you can get it on Amazon. And you also, I believe, can get it from Stalvana. Speaking of Stalvana, I had ordered a bunch of sunscreens from them this summer. And one that has become a favorite is this Roto Mentholatum Sun Play Clear Water SPF 50 PA 4 Plus. Now this will possibly leave a bit of a cast on deeper skin tones. It does have zinc and titanium dioxide, but it also has Uvenol A Plus, which is a UVA filter. Broad, uh, UVA covers UVA 1 and UVA 2, and it also has octinoxate. So it's a hybrid sunscreen. It has a bluish tint to it, which perhaps helps reduce that white flash, I'm not sure. It also has panthenol in it, which is moisturizing. It does have low molecular weight alcohol in it, which bothers a lot of, you know, a lot of people worry about that. It can be drying, but this particular sunscreen, in my experience, was not drying whatsoever. Use it around my eyes, easy breezy, and didn't pill or ball up or anything like that. And what I also really like about it is that it's water resistant, so it stays in place well. Just a very fast absorbing, non-greasy formula. A great option if you live in a humid environment. Editing me, I filmed this whole video and realized I forgot to tell you guys about the Trader Joe's sunscreen that I finished up. Love this. If you missed my review on it, definitely check it out. This was really inexpensive, at least at the time it came out. Hopefully inflation station hasn't hit it too hard. Anyways, it's a chemical sunscreen and there's no product left in it for me to show you what it looks like, but it's clear, it's colorless. It has like a poor blurring effect. For me personally, it did not burn or sting around my eyes whatsoever. Some people did comment that it does burn around their eyes, but for me, it was no issue. No fragrance, water resistant, 40 minutes, it has like a pore blurring effect to it. Very nice, very comfortable, breathable, non-greasy. And it is very similar in consistency and appearance to the Supergoop Unseen Sunscreen. So if you like that, there's a good chance you'll like this. If you don't like that product, there's a good chance you won't like this. There, um, the Black Girl um, matte, Make It Matte Sunscreen is also kind of similar in consistency to this but I've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys that you find the Black Girl Make It Matte to be a little oilier in comparison to this. Regardless, they're all kind of this clear, colorless, very isodotisane based sunscreens. 
that for me personally, I rather enjoy. And you may have noticed throughout this video that there's no lip SPF because I ended up using this a lot as my lip SPF. So I didn't quite finish up another lip, uh, I'm currently using the MD Solar Science Lip SPF, but I haven't finished it because I use this a lot as a lip balm. Um, and rarely do I get along well with face sunscreens to my lips, but this actually worked out really well. Love it, very affordable. Give it a go if you have a Trader Joe's in your area and if it's, you know, being sold still, hopefully it is. But yeah, I was really impressed with this. No, did I already say no fragrance? Yeah, no fragrance. Let me know in the comments if you tried it out, what you thought. I will say this though, I went through this pretty quickly and I don't know why. Um, I guess I liked it so much. I mean, I put sunscreen on my face every day. I don't know what it was about this that made me go through it so quickly. It feels very comfortable to apply, I guess. <laughs> kind of like a hug. And it's really a convenient size to slip into your bag too and take with you on the go. Although don't leave sunscreen in the car as a reminder because uh, the heat, the extreme temperatures can, extreme temperatures can mess up your sunscreen. So don't leave them in the car as a side note. Anyways, loved that. Now that is basically everything in the realm of sunscreen that I finished up. Um, but sun protective clothing wise, this summer I used a hat a lot, of course. And I also, one thing, I don't have them out here, but this I really found I was happy with because I mentioned that I swam a lot this summer. I bought some UPF uh, bathing suits. Uh, I did a haul of them, I think earlier towards the beginning of summer. I really love those because they basically eliminated the need for me to put sunscreen on my back or my chest because they protected the area from, from UV rays, which you can get burned while you are physically in the water as a side note, if you didn't know that. So I was really happy with them. One from Coolie Bar, one from this brand Mott 50, and then two from Body Glove, which I ended up really liking a lot as well. Um, those were kind of cute. Like I swam a lot. And when I went to Vegas, I went in the pool every day. It was so hot in Las Vegas. And yeah, they were really great because when you're, especially if you're by yourself, it can be really hard to get your back and things. So these swimsuits that I bought, I really you know, found that they were very effective. Anyways, you guys, those are the sunscreens I finished up over summer, which flew by. Glad it's fall, although just because summer is over, that doesn't mean no more sunscreen. Uh, although you may not have to reapply it as often because we get fewer hours of daylight as we get into the winter months. Uh, what is it, October, we do daylight savings time. Uh, which we're still doing. Um, I'm not a fan of daylight savings. I think it just screws everybody up. There's research showing that daylight savings time, the time change, that it coincides with like increased numbers of motor vehicle accidents, death, all sorts of problems. People have trouble focusing, getting their life on track. Yeah, it screws things up. Those of you who live in countries that don't do daylight savings, lucky you. Does, is it Las Vegas that doesn't, or Arizona doesn't do daylight savings time? I envy that. I really do not enjoy having to change my clocks. I, you know what clock I never set back or change or pay attention to? It's the clock in my car. It's always wrong. <laughs> because yeah, like I don't, I, I'm not good about changing the car clock. I rarely ever think to do it when I actually get in the car. Anyways, you guys, I yammered and ran, yeah yammered and rammered. I yammered a lot, um, but I hope you all had a great summer and that you are doing well. And on the end slate, I'm going to put my skincare empties video. So check that out if you missed it. But if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.